first thing I saw was this heinous looking monster face staring in at me. Go away, kid. Are these stories real? Please, you tell us. What I mean is, did any of the following actually happen as described in these scary, scary stories? Do you believe in flying humanoids like the Mothman? Today we're leading off with an alleged woman sending us an alleged photo of an alleged Mothman or something like it. I want to be clear, I have reservations about this photo which I will explain after I read the statement that this person sent me. Fasten your seatbelts and get ready to get creeped out by this brand new big city monster story we call Flying Dogman or Mothman over a major city? Dear Scary Stories NYC, How do I get a Mothman to leave me alone? I've encountered this thing twice, and I think it's spying on me or stalking me. The second time I saw him or it was at a great distance, and he flew to the side of a building near the top and landed holding on in some way I couldn't really see from where I was. I managed to get a photo of the creature that time, which I have attached to this email. If you zoom in, you will see that it has bat-like wings, which are somewhat translucent. I'm not really that clear on the creature's body, as from a distance, I've mainly witnessed its immense wings and up close. I really only saw his face. That was the first time I saw the thing, when I woke up to find it staring in the window at me in my apartment, which is dozens of floors in the sky. I guess that's the main story to tell you because I've sort of already explained the photo I sent. It flew to the building, alighted on it, and I got the sense it was watching me again. After I took the shot, it sort of sidled away down the side of the building until I couldn't see it any longer. I don't know if it flew away or went inside the building or what, because to date, that was the last time I've seen him. But I do think he's been back here. At times I wake up in the middle of the night, and I could swear I just heard a heavy thump outside my building. But it never repeats, so I'm never really certain that I heard it because I might have dreamed of the noise. I do feel a bit paranoid sleeping alone in that place even though the apartment is a dream come true in every other way. I want the Mothman, or bat-winged humanoid, or whatever it is, to go away. And that's why I'm writing to you. How do I keep it away? It's turned my apartment from my home into a dangerous place to be. I never use my balcony anymore. I've got a fear of that thing grabbing me and trying to fly off with me. Or worse. So let me tell you what I saw the first time. This, I do not think, was a dream. And I'll explain why. But at the time, I was half convinced I must be dreaming. What happened was this. I got up, suddenly, in the middle of the night with a feeling that someone was calling me and trying to get me to wake up. It was like when you were a kid and your mother or father or guardian told you it was time to get ready for school. This one was the final warning when you were at risk of oversleeping if you didn't get up immediately. This was urgent. So I got up, confused about what was going on, and the first thing I saw when I looked across the room was this heinous looking monster face staring in at me. It had big glowing red eyes, but really massive red eyes and people tell me I'm wrong, but I remember seeing a sideways beak, like a very, very short beak, but instead of opening up and down, it opened left and right, kind of like Mothra in the movies. The face looked like an overcooked fried egg 
covered in soy sauce, lumpy, brown, and kind of plastic looking. The eyes glowed in a way where they got a bit brighter and a bit dimmer rhythmically, like according to its breathing or heartbeat or something, I guess. Despite the beak, nothing about that face suggested a bird to me. I thought I was seeing someone in a Halloween costume, only I knew that couldn't be because there's no ledge outside that window. So I strained to understand what I was looking at. I should mention at this point that the window in my bedroom is very small. It's the smallest in the apartment, and it's fairly high off the floor. I think it's mainly there to let in some light or air, but it's small and discreet for your privacy. I don't know anyone else with a window like it, so I don't know if it's common or not, but that's the way that window looks. The opening is about the size of a large head, and this thing had a large head. I had no idea what the rest of it looked like, and all I knew was I didn't want it to get in the house. Half awake and half asleep, I went and got my broom and came back shouting at the big ugly thing and waving the broom at it as menacingly as I could without actually getting too close to the window. The thing was terrifying to see, whatever it was. So then the face went to its left and my right and it wasn't there anymore. I heard a sound from the living room to my right that sounded like a sailboat. The sails of a sailboat, I mean. I ran into that room, which has old-school picture windows on one wall and a floor-to-ceiling glass doors leading out to the balcony on the other. I saw a giant Batman fly by. Not like Bruce Wayne, but a bat the size of a man, basically. I mainly only saw its wings as they flapped and the thing maneuvered through the air. It did sort of move like a bat as it spun around and went in circles and seemed to fly up onto either my building's roof or the one next door that is a few stories taller than we are. I didn't hear it land, so it's also possible it just flew away. Have you ever seen bats fly around in circles the way they do? I've read that's the way they catch insects to eat. Flying insects plucked right out of the air using their sonar to guide them directly to their dinner. I have no idea why the big bat thing flew like that, since it seemed to have two very, very large red eyes. Also, it was far too large to subsist on a diet of flying bugs. And if these things don't eat bugs... Who knows why that creepy thing was watching me that night. Maybe it was looking at me and seeing a hamburger, like in those old cartoons. And that brings me back around to my original question. How do I make sure this thing goes away? I could really use some pointers if anyone out there has any. Maybe I'm overreacting. Maybe the thing won't ever come back. But that second sighting, as you can see occurred in broad daylight. The thing seems emboldened to me, and that gives me the willies. Also, does anyone even know what this thing is? I don't want to say where I am, but it's a very large city in the northern United States. Please help, and if I see the thing again, I'll be back in contact. Now, before you decide if this is a real story and a real photo, I should tell you what exactly I got here. This is a screen grab of a photo open in some photo viewing program. It's not the original photo, and I can't look at its metadata to tell if it was photoshopped or not. I did ask if I could get the original and the individual claimed they didn't know how to get photos off their phone into an email. Is that really possible in 2020? They live in a high-rise apartment building. They must know how a cell phone works. Also, they won't even say what city this photo was taken in. Another question that could be answered if I had a copy of the original photo file. Some of you may not mind all of that. While for some others of you, I'm sure that's all a deal breaker. 
I have sent instructions for how to get images off of an Android phone and requested a copy of the original once again. At the time of the making of this video, I have not yet heard back from them. If they do send anything interesting, I'll put an update in a future video. Now here's another story I'd like you to tell me. Is this real? Or is this not real? And the story's called... The Ghost That Haunted Halloween Dear Scary Stories NYC I saw a ghost one time in my life and it completely changed the lives of my entire immediate family. I'll tell you about it. My father's favorite holiday has always been Halloween. Mom's too, but in a different way. You see, at some point during my childhood, my mother became a practicing pagan or a practitioner of Wicca. To her, Halloween, or whatever she called it that I could never pronounce, was a sacred holiday. To me and Dad, it was all about the monster movies and the candy. My father calls himself Christian, but he never goes to church, and he seems more science-oriented than faith-based to me personally. He definitely did not believe in hell, or the devil, or ghosts being the spirits of the dead. To Dad, and to me too I guess, ghosts were characters in movies and books and TV shows. We weren't exactly atheists, but we really didn't believe in any of that stuff. Not even Bigfoot or space aliens, which a lot of people do believe in. We loved movies and TV shows and whatnot about the paranormal or the supernatural, though. Science fiction as well. To us, it was all part of the same big pizza, and we liked every different kind of slice. We watched horror movies on TV together, and my mother would roll her eyes. During the era when I grew up, most of the horror movies that came out were too mature for my mother to allow Dad to take me to see, but... He'd buy me magazines so I could see photos of the scary parts. But the big part of Halloween for my family was that each year, Dad and I would create a bigger and more elaborate display out on our front lawn. Some people do Christmas. We did Halloween. My mother was embarrassed by all of it when her Wiccan friends would see what we were doing, but none of them ever seemed as offended as she did. We were careful not to put any green-faced old witches out there, so generally Mom's pagan friends seemed encouraging about it. They could see how hard we worked, harder each year. We both really looked forward to Halloween, and we'd start planning and buying parts for each display in January or February, like right as soon as Christmas was over. Although I loved the ritual more than anything when I was a kid, by the time I was a teen, I had a steady girlfriend, and she didn't think that my dad's Halloween lawn show was very cool at all. I started finding excuses to get out of helping my father, and he actually hired a local carpenter to help him instead. Mom was extremely unhappy, but Dad was in bliss. Now things were getting built faster and far more professionally. Now Dad could really push the envelope, and work on bringing his true vision to life. Dad began openly calling the lawn show this year his masterpiece. It actually was his best work, I have to say that. No longer was it just a display you could appreciate when walking or driving by. Now, it was an entire haunted house tour. Our house is quite old, and we have trap doors which lead to tunnels that are now sealed off but used to lead to the docks. There was smuggling of some sort going on here, and some of the old wooden crates are still down there in the labyrinth below. Empty now, of course. Well, my father had built a pretty cool-looking dungeon in those tunnels under the house. He got a cast of about 20 local kids and teens to play prisoners and zombie jail guards, and it was really quite a show. Dad would be the tour guide, speaking in his Boris Karloff voice that sometimes actually sounded like Boris, but not usually. He had Bach's Toccata Fugue in D minor playing on repeat in the background, 
and he would tell us the sad story of each undead prisoner, including details about how they had been tortured and made to confess to consorting with demons and so forth. It was all a big laugh to us, but my mother felt Dad was making jokes about subjects that he didn't really understand. So, my girlfriend's sister had volunteered to play a part in my father's haunted dungeon, and that made my girlfriend want to see what the fuss was all about. All of a sudden, it wasn't a nerdy thing once her sister was interested. I should have been insulted, but I was young and in love, so I just took her on a date to my house's sub-basement and let Daddy Karloff put on his hammy show. Except, this night, we would all get a taste of the actual supernatural. I hope you don't think I'm a loony tune for saying that, but I swear to you that if this was a trick, it was so well done that it may as well have been paranormal. There was a point in the show where my father, before telling us the list of scary stories about each prisoner, would swear that everything he was about to say was absolutely true. This house, he would tell us, was once owned by Ebenezer Eversneezer, the man who could never get over his cold, and that was because he spent so much time underground in these tunnels, attending to his illegal horde of what we no longer know. If these stories I'm telling you now are not true, Dad would announce, May the spirit of old Ebenezer Eversneezer slap me silly right now. And just then, Dad turned his face hard to his right as though he actually had gotten his wish granted. We all laughed thinking it was just part of the show. My girlfriend even said she heard a sort of a clapping sound when Dad turned his face quickly like that. But the strange part is that Dad was not laughing along with us. He looked confused and more than a little frightened. He called off the rest of the underground dungeon tour and he brought everyone upstairs. My girlfriend was disappointed because he ended the show before her sister had gotten to perform. We went up to my father to ask him what was going on and when we caught up to him, we both got the surprise of our lives. There, on my dad's left cheek was a very red handprint. I kid you not, my mother thought it was the funniest thing she'd ever seen. She laughs about it to this day. That was nine years ago this year, and still it was the only time anyone that we know of has had a paranormal or supernatural seeming experience in our house or underneath it. The whole thing really did feel like a one-off experience when we encountered the ghost that haunted Halloween. The dog man who looked in my passenger window. Dear Scary Stories NYC, I've got a dog man story for you. It actually happened to me. This was a while back maybe seven or eight years, I don't remember exactly, but it was when I lived with this woman that we can call Bertha. She was nice when I met her, but after I moved in, she turned into a big nasty Bertha overnight. We had bought a car together, which I regret to this day. She got the world's worst GPS thingy and installed it, then insisted I had to use the crappy things she bought. So, one day I was driving to a different state for business reasons and I was going to be late for my meeting because I had gotten lost somewhere in Wisconsin. This was the second or third time I'd ever been to the state and I had no idea where I was going. So I tried to get Bertha's GPS to work and nothing was happening. She had shown me what she does when this happens and I did the same. I pulled off to the side of the highway which was just a two-lane blacktop. I stuck the GPS out the window and I let it try to pick up a signal. Please, please, I begged it. Just tell me where I am. Just freaking tell me where I am. Waving it around in the air, 
I was getting no reaction whatsoever from the little piece of plastic garbage. It was at that point that the skies darkened. Thunder rumbled through the region, and water came pouring down from the sky, drenching my hand and that cheap plastic GPS box thing. My day was not going well, and it was about to get even worse. I heard a tapping to my right, which startled me. I thought I was completely alone, but there was someone else there all right. It's just that this guy wasn't actually a human being. At first, in the pouring rain, I thought I was seeing a horribly deformed hitchhiker asking for a lift. In fact, I don't know that he wasn't asking to be let in out of the rain. Maybe he was. I think mostly he was tapping to get me to turn and look at him. I think he was curious about me, since I don't know if this guy had ever even seen a human before. So, what was I looking at, which was staring back in at me? I was staring at what looked like a drenched dog. A dog soaking wet from standing in the pouring rain. The problem was that this dog was standing up like a human, and his paws kind of looked more like hands than dog paws. I screamed. I was looking at a monster. There was a dog-headed monster outside my car, and it was calmly tapping on the window as though it needed a lift. I peeled out, skidding the car all over the wet road as I went from zero to seventy hydroplaning in a new record time. I left that dogman back there, standing and looking confused. Better him than me, that's all I have to say. So I was about to get on my cell phone and tell my client that I was going to miss the meeting. I was completely lost, and now I was shaken up too. But as I grabbed my phone, I looked up and saw a sign for where I needed to go. I was actually pretty close to where I needed to be, and the dogman had sort of put me back on track. So... It was the weirdest meeting ever, as I kind of felt traumatized and shaky, but I couldn't explain why. It was hard to focus, and I noticed him giving me strange looks at various points when I said odd or inappropriate things. He always thought I was a weirdo after that, but I think he would have thought I was even weirder. If I had been honest with him about why I was in such a state of shock, He'd have probably stopped working with me entirely if he knew about the dog man who looked in my passenger window. Thanks for watching till the end. If you liked what you saw, please consider clicking like on the video or sharing it. You can become a channel member by clicking the join link below. Then you can check our community page to find the links to 10 hours or more of secret, uncensored dogman stories too wild to be told on this channel. Your other option is to join our paid subscribers club at peterbernard.com. That's Peter's homemade club where he will personally email you the links as well as occasional secret club messages. You may also be included as an executive producer in a future episode. You have a scary experience you want to tell us about? You can email us at scarystoriesnyc at gmail.com or else call our Scary Stories voicemail hotline at 804 Less Scary. The machine cuts off every few minutes, so if you have a long story, please keep calling back and we'll piece it together later on. Good night and have a scary tomorrow. Come back for more scary stories.